So these things are, 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 are important, and, uh, and these are the neurotransmitters that control us, directly or indirectly. Some of you are laughing because there are certain systems stimulated by my talk, and some of you are sleepy because certain, of my, certain parts of my talk, they don't interest you. So the, 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 the neurotransmitter system is not excited, you know, your action potential has gone out. <coughs> so, how do you use neurotechnology to prove this? Neuroimaging. You have structural neuroimaging and you have functional neuroimaging. And what neuroscientists are doing nowadays is look at using the MRI and other modalities to look at the function of the cells. So I use the word they light up on the MRI images. <coughs> Cognitive neuroscience and the mind. Okay, I'm leaving the brain. I'm stepping into cognitive neuroscience and the mind. It is a field, mainly academic at the moment, concerned with scientific study of biological substrates and underlying cognition with specific focus on the neural substrates or mental processes, how we think. And neuro cognitive neuroscientists might have different backgrounds, neurobiology, psychiatry, neuro neurology, physics, computer science, Linguist, philosophy, mathematics. Professor Ishwa can call himself a cognitive neuroscience, and he's right. He is. You know? And you don't need to study humans. You may study even animals, invertebrates, fish, you know, plants. You know? So because these are the fundamental issues that you need to understand before you can go to the human, human being. So you have uh, different gadgets that you use. Electrophysiology gadgets, um, and then functional neuroimaging gadgets. So this will tell us how the mind thinks. So religion, <coughs> theories of the mind and its functions, have early records from the time of Zoroaster, Buddha, Plato, Aristotle, Adi Shankara, and ancient Greek, Indian, Christian, and later Islamic philosophers. And these have um, come out. They have come out with theories about the mind and the soul. Therefore, we have uh, the ability to change our minds, sometimes even have two personalities, two minds in one brain, split personalities, you know? So this is all uh, things that, and some of them are more dominant and some of them are more dominant. So these are things that, that the human being and the human brain is capable of. So knowing that, how do you create knowledge, skills, and creativity to drive the 10 and 11 Malaysia plan? How should it be done? So we have to make use of neurotechnology. And I think we have to look at brain imaging, we have to look at behavior, we have to look at psychology, and we have to look at all those other important aspects that drive the 10 and Malaysia plan, which is economics, politics, uh, trying to influence someone, decision making, artists, prevent war, warfare between two political parties <laughs> fighting each other, you know. Uh, religious belief. One, lead, one religion is superior than the other, you know, then you know, the world doesn't end. So you need this. And one proof is by the P300, which is a, a wave form that is generated when there is an event trigger and this is measured from from uh, from a person with a head injury so this is you see this this TBI means traumatic brain injury and this is a healthy brain okay so you know that in a person who has got who, whose brain is damaged this P300 which is part of the waveform generated from electroencephalography waveform is small and low and this is now uh, what are driving people to look at neuropolitics, neuroarchitecture, neuro decision making, neuro marketing, etc., etc. Because these will decide if this increases, latency increases, then that may indicate that the person likes that design, likes that architecture, likes that politician, likes that speech, etc., etc. 
And if you have the lower uh, latency, like a person in a traumatic brain injury, it might be someone who dislike that politician, dislike that team, etc., etc. So you can see that they vary. Uh, this is just taken from many human beings. So you will see uh, the, in the blue line, someone who really likes will be, you know, have a very high latency and aptitude. And someone who dislikes it will have a lower latency. So with mathematical modeling and a little bit of physics and computer work, you can decide out of, let's say, 200 people, how many people like the current prime minister, for example, versus another person. You know, so you know, these things are possible. How many likes the design of this car versus the other design of this car? So these are important. So I, 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 I took this template from the, uh, on the left hand side, it are the programs for the 10 Malaysia plan. I do not have the 11 Malaysia plan because the 11 Malaysia plan hasn't come out yet. Uh, so, and these are taken uh, from uh, the, pro the programs that was initiated. So, as you can see, uh, where can brain science help? Brain science can help in this aspect. I mean, the document is pretty thick, so I decided to take some important things, like National Competitive Enhancement Program. This is the, the, the plan of 10 Malaysia plan. So I was thinking that maybe we could do this by uh, increasing the number of general subspecialty neuroscientists. At the moment in Malaysia, there are not many neuroscientists. There are just about 69 of us. I mean, we're talking about neuroscientists, neuroscientists. We don't count the neurosurgeons. We don't count the neurologists. We don't count the other guys. You know, we just talk about pure neuroscientists. There are not many. You know. And uh, we are very happy that Prof. Ishwar decided to come back, you know, <laughs> stay with us here in Malaysia, you know. So he adds on his expertise. So we need to have new people because we are all growing old. The younger generation must take over, you know. Prof. Ishwar has to create another five, 25 clones of himself, if possible, to drive Malaysia into the next uh, era. Sending postgraduate overseas uh, to establish neurocenters. We find that. There are a lot of good neuroscience centers in US, in UK, in Japan, Australia, you know. So our postgraduates or postdocs can improve this. Maybe the academy can take this initiative to send them for a, for a few months, a year. National Neuroscience TV quiz programs. They are, they are, they are spelling, uh, spelling competitions now on how to spell, you know, New Straits Times uh, spelling competition. But if you go to UK, <coughs> Australia, <coughs> and Europe, on their TV programs, they have neuroscience uh, TV quiz programs to show how they focus on what's important now because they know neuroscience is important. Maybe establishment of one or two research institutes attached to the respective uh, ministries. A chair in neurosciences does not exist anywhere yet in, 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 in Malaysia, especially in, in government universities. Stimulus program creativity and innovation, award prizes in the field of innovation, publication, impact factor journals in neurosciences. You know, I mean, we have tropical sciences by the academy. I'm challenging the academy to have another prize, you know. I don't know, the Mahadeh or the Najib, whatever prize for neurosciences. Establishment of integrated master's PhD program in neurosciences. Introducing neurosciences to primary and secondary school syllabus. If you look how pathetic it is, the input of neurosciences in primary school and secondary school. We do not want them to load everything about neurosciences, but the syllabus is so little. So how do you expect people to be interested in neurosciences when they do not know anything about neurosciences from, from, from the age of seven? You know? Making Brain Awareness Week an international event. If you Google Brain, Brain Awareness Week in Malaysia, Brain Awareness Week is celebrated in Japan, in Singapore, in Australia, by Malaysia Zero. We have done a few attempts to do this in USM, but I'm talking about as a national, international event, you know, because this is a national thing, you know, there's a date, a date fix. Let's say 16 of, I don't know, July or whatever, there's a, there's a date, and it is celebrated worldwide. Strengthening market oriented program, environment, and business friendly. Well, we talk about business, neuromarketing, getting good leaders. We, we, can, we can use the P300 to look for good leaders, good decision makers, you know, and we can even have business schools, summer schools, 
where we introduce these two people because it's not in their syllabus. So during the semester break, we can have this, and we can bring people, especially from from UK and US, to help us. You know. And then um, neurosocial sciences and public exposure to the mind psychology. We read a lot in newspapers about heart attacks, cancer, New Straits Times, Star newspaper, but neurosciences, brain sciences, very little. Quality improvement program students, introduce introduction of neuroscience degrees and neuroscience syllabus into first basic degrees. At the moment, there are no Bachelor of Science Neuroscience in Malaysia. All developed countries, even now India, has, has a BSc in neuroscience. And that is important, I think. You know? And inculcating neuroscience syllabus into medical physics. Look at the medical physics curriculum in Malaysia. Neurosciences nearly doesn't exist. The students with neuroscience degree have to relearn neurosciences. We have to teach them neurosciences. Medicinal chemistry and neurobiology in there's hardly, not even comparative neurobiology. I, I think Prof. Ishwa will agree with me. You know I mean, forget about Monash University. I mean, look at our IPTA, you know. Look at them. You know, the, 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 so the students come, they have to relearn uh, neuroscience. It takes them six months to a year just to relearn neurosciences.